Good morning. So whatever you're sitting on, could you slide your left hand underneath your left buttock, your left bum, and just scoop the flesh of the buttocks backwards as if you're trying to pull it up your back and then release that and do the same on the other side. And it just mimics the direction the muscle is designed to go when it's in a more supportive position for the lower back. So it begins to create a little bit of tilting in the pelvis that works into your sacrum and then moves up into the lower back. So the lower back doesn't have to do all the work. And then taking a few of the deeper breaths we've been working with, little shrugging in the shoulders, you breathe into the sides of the ribs and just move a little in that space just to loosen it up and open it up. Deep breaths. Roll the shoulders. Maybe one direction, then try the other direction. Just so this space is a little bit more open, a little bit looser, a little bit more elasticated as we come into our, our stillness, our, our final position. Okay, perfect. So what we'll do is we'll close the eyes. And then take two or three deeper breaths initially. Even exhaling through the mouth, just to really let the body kind of drop or sink or relax. So very little tension. Really notice that you're releasing it from the shoulders, neck, belly. And then if you were to take just a few more of those deeper breaths, so the inhalation now is an opportunity just to gently expand, to a really slow realigning, really slow sitting up. You know, it's interesting, you know, the ways in which we engage our body. And so often our body is kind of held by this pensive energy, uh, pensive energy, uh, this kind of, unconscious holding pattern and yet when we take these deep breaths and we expand and we move and we're aware it's a different frequency that uh, is um, moving our body supporting our body and that's a little something we'll speak about this morning just this idea of the unconscious versus the conscious the idea you know of you know i think a lot of what's happening for many of us in the world watching the stories and you know there's so much polarization and all these stories around um the virus and why it's here and who did this and who did that and so much of it, much of it just conjures uh, fear just creates this unknowing this uncertainty this fear and really although you know, we don't invite a time like this. We don't invite suffering. We don't invite, of course, so many people are actually dying and there's none of that is what we're looking for or what we want. But now that it's here, this invitation to, well, how do we use this then to support not only ourselves, but all of us? How can all of us? So there is this invitation to use this as a, a mechanism of growth. And although the fear might be there, we might be able to acknowledge it. And hopefully with this work, we're able to hold it in a different way and um, possibly feel it diminishing. There's also this invitation then to envisage, to envisage something new, something positive, something expansive. You know, in olden days, we would have called it prayers. Uh, maybe the words people would use these days are things like intention. But anything that's ever been created in the world has come from a thought, an idea. So we close our eyes. And form disappears in a sense, and we're in the darkness. We're in that formless nature. And this is one of the reasons we do close our eyes with these practices. It's a simple way of connecting to this internal space, this formless space. 
you know, our logical mind knows that this internal space is held by the confines of our physical body that has a structure. And yet, when we close the eyes, all of that form disappears. We don't see it. We don't see the limitations of our skin or our bones or we're just with a vastness. And the metaphor for it is that, you know, we come from this formless space. That all life comes from this. It's like a, a soup of potentiality. This black void and every form that's ever manifested has come from this place. And our practice is this invitation as we move from fear, you know, and of course even fear arises from this, you know, it's an unconscious pattern. But if we were to bring a bit of consciousness into this process, what would we, what could we envisage for our world? What could we envisage for our world? For our own lives, but also for our world. Could we envisage a future of hope? Or a future of safety? Could we really try to embody that, to sit with a really deep connection to that intention? So maybe we could say, could it become our wish? And it's not pushing away the way things are. It's not negating uh, the suffering, all of the stuff that's there. It's kind of going, okay, this is there, but still I can hope and wish and envisage A future of greater joy, well being, peace. So it's just some food for thought. Let's come to our breath. Let's bring the attention to our breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Keep bringing your attention back to your breath. And you're simply observing, you're just noticing, you're noticing the breath. You can notice all these other things that are happening within you and around you.
keep coming back to your breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Keep coming back to your breath.
keep coming back to your breath. So we're going to slowly deepen the breath, breathing from the base of the spine all the way to the crown of the head as you inhale. And the exhalation, the breath, like a waterfall cascades down the front of the body. Just slow, long, deep breath. Tracing it, almost watching the breath rising all the way up along the spine to the crown of the head. And as you exhale, watching it falling down the front of the body. Could you imagine that the breath begins and finishes in the earth, deeper down? So your inhalation pulls it from deep in the earth to the base of the spine, up along the spine to the crown of the head. And the exhalation allows it to cascade down the front of the body and back into the earth. Three more of these deeper breaths. And as you return to your natural breath, we're going to take the left hand and just place it over the center of the chest, over that kind of heart space, and then the right hand on top of the left hand. And just let your attention move to that space of the heart. Just tune into that space. So for many of us, our default filter is our sympathetic nervous system. 
It's that part of the nervous system that determines freeze, fight, flight. The part of the nervous system that tells us that it's a bit dangerous out there and we need to be slightly protected. And that tends to run at a very unconscious level, an unseen level. And then a practice like this is supporting us in cultivating a deeper quality of awareness. And as we do that, our capacity to recognize the patterns that are running, the stories, the lenses that we're viewing ourselves in the world through. And ultimately, it's about bringing us into a place of greater expansion. You know, the idea of a movement toward accessing greater joy, being able to actually see what connects us, what binds us, what's positive, to be able to really feel those emotions more deeply, more of the time. And our society is very much although incredible in so many ways, if you think about the time span and where we've come from. And, but in terms of our continued evolution, and of course these things take time, you know, our society is very much sympathetic nervous system dominated. You know, you think about the news and the percentage of negativity or negative difficult information that's relayed through the news. So this process is an invitation to become more comfortable and connected with what is expansive and positive and life affirming. And when we do that on the individual level, we're changing the, the numbers, the percentages. Each time we have a practice that really supports us dropping into that place of really of the heart. It ultimately evolves all of us. And this idea I spoke of at the beginning of envisaging a future of hope or prosperity, you know, even just simply what would bring us joy, what would bring, what would be our deepest joy? in the sense that we're all connected, we're woven through the tapestry of life. So we ask that our practice support us really feeding the heart, our own hearts, really honoring that space. And this is the deeper, more eternal space within us. And this space of the heart is able to acknowledge the suffering in the world and the suffering in our own lives and the challenges and all of our neurosis and and to still kind of go, it's okay, that's okay. It's part of being a human being. And I can still turn to joy. I can still turn to compassion, to kindness. I can still be gentle on myself and learn to be gentle on others. I can still wish the very best without denying what is. So may our practice this morning be a technique, a process by which we really support our capacity to aspire for the very greatest life that each of us could live, the kindest, most compassionate, most creative, most exciting, that even in the face of those challenges that are present in our own lives and in the world, we still choose these higher qualities to embody, to grow, to 
align with. And then from my heart to your heart, we'll bow our heads for a moment to all of those intentions. Perfect. Great. So, uh, yoga tomorrow, Sunday morning, 9.30 on Instagram. Please feel free to come along and join. And there's a workshop coming up next Saturday um, called uh, The Mind Body. And it's really going to look at the nervous system and how we really begin to work with the nervous system. So, different, um, a bit of talk and some movement and some meditations around really supporting and healing and rebalancing the nervous system. So that lens begins to clear more. You know, we get to get that bigger picture and really support ourselves. So I wish you a great day. Okay. See you tomorrow.